unbalanced audio. Uh, that just requires two conductors. Uh, it is a positive and a ground. And unbalanced audio is not not good for long cable runs because it cannot reject interference. Um, balanced audio, on the other hand, requires three conductors. Uh, positive, a negative, and a ground. And that's much better for sending signal, audio signal, over long distances um, because it has the ability to reject interference. Uh, we'll talk more about that uh, in another video. It's a little bit more complicated. In the red, you might hear this term in the red. That basically means you are uh, about to clip or overload the circuit if you're not already doing so. So that's when you'll see a meter, a VU meter, a peak program meter. Um, in, in the green, that's good. In the yellow, it's, it, that's okay too. But then when it gets up into the red, you're in danger of clipping and distorting. So you want to keep your signals out of the red. Channel fader. So a channel fader is that uh, sliding volume control device, <laughs> volume control component uh, at the bottom of a channel strip. And then you have your master fader, and that is also a sliding potentiometer. And that controls the master volume, so all the channels that are being routed to the master bus uh, will be controlled by the master fader. So you can bring the house level up and down with the master fader, as opposed to the channel faders, which control individual instruments and microphones that are plugged into those specific channels. Next, feedback. Okay, I'm sure we've all heard feedback at some point. Uh, if you turn your microphone gain all the way up and you turn the fader up and you route that channel to the main bus and you turn the master fader up and then you point your microphone at the main speaker you will get this high-pitched squeal or in some cases you'll get this hum uh, it could it could be a combination of the two and that is basically when the microphone is picking up the signal that's coming out of the speaker. Whether it's a monitor speaker or a main speaker, it doesn't really matter. Whichever microphone, uh, which, whichever speaker the microphone is pointed at, it will feed back and begin picking up the same sound which it is processing through. And then you get this infinite loop and it just starts to ring and everybody holds their ears and they look at the sound guy like, what the heck are you doing? You never want to let that happen. Uh, you should always be ready to <laughs> get rid of feedback in case it happens. You should never get to the point where there is feedback, um, but we all know sometimes mistakes happen. So you want to be ready to know which faders to go to when the feedback starts. Decibel. Okay, decibels are kind of interesting. It, you know, everyone knows that's that's the unit of how we measure volume, but it's actually a, a, a uh, relative dimensionless unit uh, used to compare uh, the quanti uh, two quantities, right? So you're comparing an A and a B. So you can't, like an inch is a, is a fixed amount, a foot is a fixed amount, a decibel isn't any fixed amount. It's, it's a comparison uh, or a ratio uh, that shows the difference between two quantities. And uh, if you think about it, the human ear is kind of an amazing thing. You can hear a quiet pin drop, and we can also hear a jet engine. And there is a vast difference, almost infinite difference, in volume level between those two things. So it's a very difficult thing to describe. So decibel is, um, is how we talk about differences in sound pressure level. Hertz. All right, we've got Hertz. Hertz is how we measure frequency. So cycles per second is measured in Hertz. Uh, the human ear can hear anywhere from 20 Hertz all the way up to 20,000 Hertz. And sometimes 20,000 Hertz is abbreviated to 20 kilohertz or 20 K Hertz. <clears throat> Ohm. Ohm is a unit to measure resistance uh, against current flow. D 
DAW stands for Digital Audio Workstation. EQ stands for Equalizer. Uh, that's how you can adjust the high end or the treble, uh, the mid, uh, or the bass uh, of a specific channel. VU meter and peak program meter. So these are different ways um, to understand how loud something is, or something, how loud the audio is when it's inside the console. So we can't tell how loud it is unless we hear it, but sometimes it's nice to be able to tell how loud it is uh, in the electronic circuits inside the mixing console. So we have what's called a volume unit meter or VU meter and you'll see that uh, dial kicking up and down uh, as, as your vocalist sings or as your guitar player plays you'll see that fluctuating along with the volume changes of that particular channel of that particular instrument and you also have peak program meter. Now that is measuring transients. So a transient is like a spike in volume level. So that's that's measuring um, the the peak uh, of that audio volume level, you know, as it pertains to an audio circuit inside the circuit board. And we've got this idea of headroom. So in analog circuits, we have headroom. Now that is uh, the amount of, of volume you can go a, above a normal working level. So once you reach unity gain, uh, that is typically where the analog signal should be, right, right up around unity gain or zero, uh, zero dB, zero VU. Um, and once you go above that, at some point the circuit will overload and you'll be in the red, you'll be clipping. Um, with analog circuits, there's a little bit of leeway. We call that leeway headroom. With digital circuits and digital audio, there is no headroom. So once you get up to zero VU, if you go zero plus one, you will be clipping and you will be distorting and it does not sound very pretty. All right, MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. And that is basically a communication protocol for drum machines, synthesizers, keyboards, and other processing, uh, other processing equipment um, so that they could be in sync and on the same page and control one another. One can be a master, one can be a slave. Um, that is MIDI. We have pad. So a pad is a attenuating device, right? So you push the pad and you might have a 5 dB pad, a 10 dB pad, a 20 dB pad. So if your signal is really hot, you will press the pad and automatically the circuit will adjust and dump down that signal from wherever it was to 20 dB less, 10 dB less, whatever the pad is assigned to. Uh, usually it's a fixed thing. So there'll be like a 5 dB pad. Sometimes they're on the microphones. You might have a, a, a pad on the microphone to uh, adjust level if you're trying to mic something very loud. You don't want to overload the circuitry. A pad will bring it down. And usually they're push buttons. All right, this video is getting pretty long. A lot of terms to cover here. Potentiometer, I think this is gonna be the last one of this video. Potentiometer or pot. Now this is very similar to fader, but basically it is a a, a control where you can adjust the resistance in a circuit and a pot is generally a rotary knob so you turn it from the left into the right whereas a fader you will slide it up and slide it down but essentially they accomplish the same thing all right guys thank you for watching this video I hope you have found it informative and uh, please stay tuned for the next one